time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. All right, welcome to another episode of the 49ers Roster Countdown for 2022. And today we got an interesting one up. Number 74, tight end Troy Fumagalli. Uh, love the name. Uh, remember grading Troy whenever he came out of the 2018 draft. I had a third round grade on him. I'll share with you my pre-draft write-up of him, um, you know, coming out of Wisconsin um, and what it is that he brings to the 49ers. Now, again, remember this list, 1 through 90, is trying to find the impact on the 2022 season alone. That's it. And that's why I have him higher than some of the other players that I think, you know, long-term will make a bigger play because I could honestly very easily see Troy Fumagalli getting snaps for the 49ers this year in season, despite wherever he lands at the initial roster breakdown. So he's a tight end wearing number 49. Uh, there's a couple players with 49 numbers. Six foot six, 248. Ideal build for a tight end. Um, he's 27 years old, entering his fifth season in the NFL. And one of the reasons why I think that's important for a tight end, the tight end position is the most difficult transition from the college level to the NFL level. It's the most difficult. Rookie tight ends, even, you know, you look at Kyle Pitts and how great he is, even though he's more of a wide receiver. That's uncanny what he was able to achieve last year. It's very, very difficult uh, to be able to go from college to the NFL as a tight end. So somebody that's, you know, been there, he's bounced around a lot of teams and all that kind of stuff. I think it gives him a little bit more of a leg up over some of these younger tight ends that he's competing against. Um, and so anyway, now let, let's talk about he's from, oh, I'm going to mess this up, Wabansee Valley in Aurora, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. Um, and he played for the Warriors, the Wabansee Warriors, man. I uh, love the alliteration there. And, you know, went to college at Wisconsin and was a very, very prominent player. Now, if we just look at kind of what he achieved in his college level, um, you know, redshirted his first year, then, you know, started playing in 2014, played in all 14 games with two starts at tight end. And again, finally got his second letter starting 11 games with four starts. Um, sorry, playing in 11 games with four starts 2015, and it just kept going. Uh, by his junior year, redshirt junior year, started all 14 games at tight end, and the senior year kind of exploded. Um, you know, shared the Jimmy Dimitrol Team MVP Award with fellow senior teammates in 2017 at Wisconsin, and those were some really, really good teams. Now, some honors that he's received, academic All-Big Ten. Stop me if you've heard this before. 49ers go after these guys. It's very important to them. Um, 2015, All-Big Ten honorable mention. 2016, Cotton Bowl Classic Offensive MVP, second team All-Big Ten. Um, and then 2017, John Mackey Award finalist, Bullsworth Trophy finalist, second team All-American. I mean, you can just keep going. Uh, Qualic Clark, Big Ten tight end of the year, first team All-Big Ten. It was unreal what he was able to achieve. And so he went from a walk-on to an earned scholarship to invited to the Senior Bowl to inviting to the Combine and getting drafted in the fifth round by the Denver Broncos. So this is a guy who has been very consistent with what it is that he wanted to accomplish and fought through that. Now, his he's got an interesting story. You know, he was born with amniotic band constriction. They had to amputate part of his index finger um, right after he was born. So he's got an amputated finger, which definitely makes it difficult. Uh, father played at Holy Cross. Both of his brothers played baseball. Uh, one of his brothers played baseball at Dayton, Dayton. The other one played football at Dayton. So very athletic family. Huge hands, um, despite that one finger being amputated. Ten and a quarter inch hands, 34 and one eighth arm length. Um, not the strongest guy, only 14 reps at the combine, didn't do any of the running drills and stuff like that 40 wise, but athleticism is not really what he was bringing to the game. Let's go back now. And I, I love that I've been doing this for so long that I can go back, you know, five plus years and read my draft right up on these players. Again, every one of these is written before the player is drafted. So I don't change it afterwards. This is what I had written on him before he was drafted. Um, Troy Fumagalli is a textbook run blocker that understands how to use his hips, cut off the defender from the run gap, locks onto his defender and pass protection like a left tackle, will be a major asset in goal line um, as he sets as a blocker, not the best wide receiver. 
Um, Fumagalli's definition of fundamentals in all areas could teach some left tackles about footwork. Great feet. Um, I, I remember watching this. If you play O-line or tight end for Wisconsin, you've gone through it. <laughs> you've gone through it. Um, Fumagalli is not a highlight reel, but grades out positive almost every play. Um, and my player comparison was a watered-down Ben Watson. Ben Watson played for a long time. I had a third-round grade on him, back in third-round grade. He went in the fifth round, pick 156. Um, and so when the Denver Broncos drafted him, um, he got, he was injured right off the bat. So he got placed on injured reserve to start his career and it never really took off. He gets waived. Then the Houston Texans pick him up. Um, he gets waived. Then he goes back to the Broncos, which I think is a testament, right? So they recognize that he had talent. They just had to move on because of injuries. They brought him back. He was with them for a full year on their practice squad. Then the Patriots picked him up. He got waived on injured reserve, right? Okay, so again, injuries are an issue. Then the 49ers picked him up. So what has he done? He's only actually got snaps in two or recorded stats in two years, 2019 and 2020. In 2019, he had six catches for 38 yards and a touchdown. For 2020, eight catches for 80 yards and a touchdown. The reason why so many teams take a chance on him is today's NFL tight ends are more move tight ends. This dude's not a move tight end. That's not what he's going to be. You know, he's already he's got five career starts and played in 19 games, so he's got experience. There's no doubt about that. But I think the number three tight end spot is within his grasp. Do I think do I have him making it? No, that's why I have him at 74. Right, only 53 players make the roster, but there will be a third tight end. Whether that's Roz Dwelly, uh, whether it's Troy Fumagalli, you know, whether it's the guy they brought over from Buffalo, um, Croft, like he has a path to this. And with the 49ers' heavy emphasis on the run game, Troy Fumagalli is going to get a bump there. I, I really believe that he will. Now, can he prove that he can outseat Dwelly? I don't know. And I'll say this regardless, of whether Troy Fumagalli makes the initial 53, which I do not have him making. I Even if he doesn't make the practice squad, which I probably wouldn't put him there either, there is a legitimate chance if there is one injury to a tight end, whether that's you know Kittle, Warner, or whoever makes the number three spot, this dude's going to be number four. And I think... You know, it might be, you know, later in the season, but I could definitely see him being on special teams and being activated. That's why I think, you know, some of these younger players, Kyle Shanahan redshirts his rookies and undrafted free agents. They're going to sit. This dude, Troy from Magali, he could play right now and give you meaningful snaps from that number three. Now, again, okay, meaningful snaps. I'm talking five to ten snaps a game as the tight end three. <laughs> and so, like, I think that's what he brings. But... The trust that you could have in this veteran that's been around and been in so many systems and all that kind of stuff, it just is one of the smart things about this NFL roster that, guess what? If you have an injury or two at tight end and you see Troy Fumagalli out there, I'm not stressing about that because he can block so well. And so he brings something to the table that a lot of these other tight ends don't. Uh, everybody wants to focus on pass receptions and whatever, which he's okay at. I don't know. I mean, Roz Dwelly, I mean, he's bringing you average pass catching ability. But what he does bring you is above average blocking, and that is key. So I, I have no qualms about putting this guy out there with Trey Lance and all that stuff in obvious pass situations. Let Kittle run the routes. Let Troy block. Um, so possibly a tight end three, but that's why we got him at 74. Uh, if he would have been on the roster last year, probably would have had him in the 60s. But the depth that they have added across the board this year is just, it's unworldly. Uh, it's different. So just want to say thank you to Josh and Anthony, executive producers of this series, as we keep grinding through all 90.